One of the things we like to do at UK NOF meetings um, is for an audience that can't always travel to the international internet meetings is to get people who are doing stuff on um, an international basis to come to the UK and it's been great we've had a couple of speakers that have done that already today. Um, it's always particularly good when we manage to um, reel back British expats that are doing global stuff elsewhere. Um, so I'm pleased to introduce a um, former colleague of mine, Dave Knight, who's working at Affilius, and he's going to talk about the work that they've been doing on DNSSEC signing of .org. So, Dave. The last few months to sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, Keith. Um, my name is Dave Knight. I work for Affiliates Canada. Um, in the last few months, we've been preparing uh, to sign .org. Uh, we run .org, the registry and name servers, on behalf of uh, PIR, the Public Interest Registry. Um, we uh, .org has six name servers, and all six of those are Anycast. We Anycast, and all of those are Anycast in IPv4 and v6. We at Affiliates run four of those, and we outsource the operation of two of them to a secondary provider. Um, our current secondary provider is uh, PCH, a packet clearing house. Um, Affiliates ourselves, we have currently five name server nodes um, in North America, Europe, and Asia. Um, we have a, a, a diverse, a, what would we think, a diverse and open source platform. We have, within each of the nodes, um, we have a mixture of Bind9 and NSD. We run that on Linux and FreeBSD. We run that on a mixture of uh, Intel and Power5 hardware. Um, every one of the nodes, we have a mixture of Cisco and Juniper routers, and every node has at least two independent transit providers. Um, Uh, and this is what our infrastructure, at, in a nutshell, looks like. We have the, a, a registry, which essentially is a big Postgres database, where updates from registrars come in in EPP on the left-hand side into the registry. Um, there's a, a, what we call the distributor, which is an adapter on the registry, which turns the registry data into DNS and sends that towards the DNS infrastructure, which is what our group operates. Um, you see, each one of our nodes has two machines which talk to the registry and get this feed of updates, and then feed that on to a stack of what we call application servers, which are what actually run bind and NSD and answer queries coming from customers on the internet. Um, and the reason for this, this staged setup is just so that we don't have dozens and dozens and dozens of servers talking directly to the registry. Um, and those application servers are this mixture of Power5 and Intel boxes and, and uh, free, uh, sorry, Linux and FreeBSD. In front of those, we have um, load balancers, which are constantly performing health checks on each of the name servers and make sure that there is always a set of good servers, which is both in ter good in terms of being able to answer queries, but that they also have a recent uh, version of the zone on them. Um, and then in front of those, we have uh, Cisco and Juniper routers, which then advertise the service prefixes in, in BGP. And depending on which node it is, they'll advertise. Each name server is a single IP address inside either a slash 24 or a slash 48 prefix. And each node will advertise one or more, but never more, oh, so, sorry, either one or two of the, pref of the prefixes we have. A prefix, a pair of v4 and v6 prefixes for each server. We have four servers, um, so each node will never advertise more than two of the servers because we don't want fake sharing for all of the servers. Similarly, no one server would ever only be advertised at one node. Um, so we like that this infrastructure the way it is. It lets us. We have. Um, because we have this uh, adapter on the registry, it lets changes made in the registry propagate into the DNS very quickly, and around a minute from uh, making a change in the registry to having that appear in the DNS. Um, so when we came to start thinking about how we would do DNSSEC, 
uh, we didn't want to slow that down. Similarly, we didn't want to add a lot of extra complexity to the registry, particularly in something new which may change a lot over time. Um, and also we wanted the DNSSEC signing to be a function of the DNS infrastructure and not necessarily of the registry if we can get away with it. So what we've done in that regard is we have, we're putting together a, a bump in the wire signer, which I think is an idea that originally came from uh, Jacob Schlitter. Um, and we've been working with Secure64, a company Secure64 have been working on a signer product which does exactly this. It takes a IXFR feed in one side, signs the zone and provides an IXFR feed out the other side essentially. And that will let us drop this in, um, if you look at these two pictures, I mean, it, we drop this in just after the registry and so instead of getting an unsigned.org coming out of the registry, we now get a signed one. Um, we've been testing this and, and we have this working now. Um, we have, in fact, there are servers up that you can go query. I could maybe show that at the end. Um, but we have uh, a signed.org now running on our platform. And this Secure64 box is it's a HP Itanium box that runs their own proprietary OS. Um, the name server that they use is NSD, and they have built um, key management software, um, and it implements NSEC3, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, yeah. We decided to wait for NSEC3 uh, for two reasons. Um, orgs a big zone um, using NSEC and signing the whole zone. Currently, .org uses anywhere between two and three gigs of RAM, depending on whether we're using NSD or bind. Um, if we were to sign it with NSEC, it would be using about six gigs. Um, so NSEC 3 has, has two benefits, um, the, the second of which is that you don't have to sign every record in the zone. Only for, for the type of zone that org is, it's a big delegation zone. We only have to sign secure delegations, which are those where the actual zone, ha the delegated zone has been signed and the owner of that zone has sent us a DS record. We sign that delegation, but not anything where that child zone has not been signed. So this, when we have a slow startup where we only have a small number of si signed children, it won't impact the size of the zone because we'll only have to add signatures for those. The other important thing about NSEC3 is that it, has a, it provides measures against zone enumeration, which was a concern with NSEC. The way that NSEC, uh, one of the features of DNSSEC is um, authenticated denial of existence, um, which means essentially that when you ask the zone for a name that doesn't exist, you can get a secured answer to say that it doesn't exist. The way that that's implemented in NSEC is an NSEC record contains um, two names so that, you can, so that it can respond and verify that there's nothing existing between those two names. But by walking the chain of the NSEC records, you can discover the whole zone, and this was undesirable for various reasons. NSEC3 implement, achieves the same end, but it does this by hashing names. So you can no longer use it to discover all of the names in the zone. Um, so we've been following PIR's timeline for this. Um, we spent, uh, PIR formally proposed their uh, intention to sign.org last year. Um, so we spent the second half of last year working with vendors. Um, NSD um, has NSEC3 support, Bind9 gained NSEC3 support towards the end of the year. Um, I mentioned Secure64, who we're working with on building a signer. Um, they, I think they've ended their NSEC3 signer beta um, in December, and they now have, they've now launched their signer product. And that's what, what we're intending to use in, in the first instance of this. Another reason that we have gone with this model of this bump in the wire signer um, is that we would like to have diversity there. So we may, we've been talking about it, we haven't actually made any steps in this direction yet really, but we may implement our own signer software, um, which we could drop in alongside the Secure64 box or as a replacement to it, or 
really it just lets us have flexibility in that area so that if, if we do have something else we can put it in. Um, we're now working towards, in the first half of this year, we will sign.org. Um, when we do that, it's going to be uh, limited. We will sign the zone, and what that essentially means is that we'll put keys into the zone and sign you know, the, the SOA records, things like that. Um, but no delegations will be signed at first. Um, so really, there's not much change to the zone on day one. But shortly thereafter, we have a set of uh, uh, delegations, PIR.org, Affiliates.org, we will sign and add DS records for those to the zone. That will be done manually. We have, uh, while we've been working on these, this stuff on the DNS side, the registry has had DS support added to it. That's also been added to EPP. That stuff's in testing now, but that's not going to be made generally available until the end of the year. Um, so for the next six months, we'll have, oh well, for the six months after we sign, we'll have just the, uh, these friends and family domains, which is a, a set, of, I think, of less than 10 .org uh, domains, which will be in there signed. Um, and then later, I think that's going to be expanded. Um, and then towards the end of the year, this will just be made generally available to those registrars who've implemented the EPP extensions on their side. Um, currently, we're planning to go ahead with the first step of this, of actually signing .org, um, sometime around the end of quarter one, beginning of quarter two. Any questions? OK, thank you. Oh. Uh, we're also planning to, uh, to sign .uk um, very soon, and we're going to use a, a very similar setup, a bump in the wire. We're actually helping develop OpenDNSSEC. I was just wondering if you, if you were aware of that or um, looked at it at all. To, to Roy Ahrens about that um, just yesterday. Um, and we weren't actually aware of just how far along that was. Um, so yeah, I'd, Shane Kerr is here as well. Uh, Shane's actually done most of the work on this. Um, so hopefully uh, um, he'll be uh, talking to Roy and, and others about this pretty soon. Yeah, we, I, I talked to some of the other people involved uh, with this DNSSEC effort. Um, but the timelines that they were, they were thinking of when I talked to them last uh, autumn were such that it wouldn't be available till at least no earlier than the middle of this year, and given the timeline that you saw there, it just it just wasn't suitable for us. Um, but it's not just we are not necessarily opposed to adopting it in the future. So. Okay, there's a um, question off the jabber from Gavin Brown of um, Central Nick. Mm -hmm. Gavin wants to know. Let me get this right. Um, how many .org registrars? will provide a way for um, end users to pass their DS keys up to the registry? Um, well, like I said, this is something that won't be generally available to registrars until the end of the year. Um, as I understand it, there are at least a couple of them right now who are, who've, you know, have an interest in, in enabling DNSSEC support in, their, in, in the registrar side of things, and they're working with PIR on that. Um, but yeah, so I, I think at the time that we make this available to registrars, there should be at least one or two, if not more, who, who have the support for it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dave.